So this video is all about the definition of combined footing and why do we provide combined footing and what are the different types of combined footing. I am Abhijit Baikarikar and you are watching all about structural analysis and design. So let's start with this today's video with the definition of combined footing. So combined footing can be defined which supports the load of two or more adjacent columns. So this picture will give you a clear idea what is meant by combined footing. So in this uh, particular picture what you see is here there are two columns which are placed uh, very uh, close to each other okay. So it might be three it might be four okay but the common thing is here the foundation or uh, the footing is common for this two particular columns. So this is the definition of combined footing. So combined footing which supports the load of two or more adjacent columns. So this column is uh, supported in this particular one footing. Okay, so this is the definition of combined footing. So why do we need combined footing is the next question which will come into your mind. So there are various uh, individual footings also that uh, uh, which is having uniform thickness. Again, sloped footing is there, then stepped footing, then various types of footing, individual footings or spread footings you call it. Okay, there are uh, different footings. But why do we need combined footing. So the first uh, point is when columns are very uh, placed very close to each other such that their footings overlap. So what happens when the columns are very near and when you go for a footing design the footings will overlap with each other. Okay this is the practical difficulty will arise if you provide a separate footings for separate columns. So that time the first picture which I have shown the columns were very closely spaced each other in that time you go for this combined footing. So then next second point is when bearing capacity of soil is less. So bearing capacity of soil when it is less it requires more area under individual footing. Okay that time you cannot provide individual footing when uh, bearing capacity of soil is less because it will require more area. And the third point is when end column. Okay when your end column is near a property line. So again, it is a practical difficulty. So when it, uh, uh, it is very near to the property line, the footings cannot be spread in that direction or, uh, in that direction or in uh, someone's property. So that time this again uh, combined footing is provided. So then what are the different types of combined footing? So the first uh, regular uh, which we provide is combined rectangular footing. Then uh, that is a combined trapezoidal footing, strap footing and the last one is a raft footing. So combined rectangular footing is used when two columns carry equal loads. So when W1 and uh, this W2 are almost equal or equal then we go for a rectangular footing. So this looks like a rectangle that's why we have given a name this is a combined rectangular footing. So then a combined trapezoidal footing. So when this is provided is when the one of the column carries heavy load compared to another. Suppose here in this figure P1 is having 1200 kilonewton, P2 is 2000 kilonewton. So P2 is heavier than P1. So under P, P2, so the dimensions are uh, greater compared to under the column P1. Okay. And if you provide here a rectangular footing, rectangular uh, combined rectangular footing what happens it will be uneconomical because the load coming from p1 is uh, smaller and load coming from uh, p2 is larger if you provide a same thickness then it will be unnecessarily you are wasting a uh, your resources your concrete and other things so what we do that time we go for a trapezoidal footing next strap footing strap beam is connected to the spread footings so this is your usual uh, the spread footings will be there and you will be attaching a strap beam. So this is useful when external column is very near to the property line and the beam connecting the two spread footings does not transfer any load to the soil. So whatever the beam you are connecting between the uh, uh, spread footing so it will not transfer any load to the soil. But the function of that particular strap beam is to transfer the load of heavily loaded outer column to the inner column. So this figure will uh, clear this concept. So sub, uh, this figure which shows the column A very near to the property line and this is column B which is a inner column or inner footing. Okay. 
and strap beam is connected between these footings. So this is your regular spread footings and the strap beam is connected between the footings and this one is very near to the property line. So what strap beam does is it will not transfer any load to the soil. Instead, this will transfer the load of heavily loaded of outer column to the inner column of that particular under footing. So this is the function of this strap beam to convert or to transfer the load from this footing to that particular inner footing. And the last one is raft footing. The definition goes like this. It is a type of combined footing that covers the entire area beneath a structure and supports all the walls and columns. So this figure is about the raft footing. So everything it is uh, covered with the reinforcements and all the columns, all the walls are supported under this particular raft footing. So this was the different types of footing and also I cleared the definition of combined footing and why do we provide combined footing. So if you have understood this video, please like it, share it and don't forget to subscribe all about structural analysis and design and also press the bell icon for the latest notification of my videos in civil and structural engineering. Thank you friends.